All right, what's going on everyone? My name is John and welcome back to the channel. If you guys are new here, I create weekly videos on various web development topics spanning from your basic HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, and I also cover a lot of videos specific to Vue.js. So if that is something you're interested in, be sure to subscribe. So in this video, we're gonna be covering some HTML tags that you probably don't know because there's so many tags out there that it's nearly impossible to know them all, meaning that there is a lot of tags that people just don't know about. So what I've done for this video is I've compiled a list of five different HTML tags that we're going to be covering, so let's jump right into it. So the first tag that we have here is called the abbreviation tag, and what it does is define a abbreviation or an acronym. So here inside of my markup, I have a very simple example of how we could use this abbreviation tag. So recently I've been seeing this acronym called TLDR, which means too long didn't read. So this would be a perfect example of where we could use our abbreviation tag to give our users a little bit more understanding of what this actually means. So we can start with our opening tag, which is ABBR, and then we have our closing tag. And then inside of here, we can say TLDR like this. And if we save that, we don't see any change here within the browser. But this abbreviation tag here also accepts what they call a title attribute. And we can define what this acronym means inside of this title attribute. So we can say too long didn't read. So if we save this now, you can see that inside of the browser underneath our TLDR acronym, we have this little dotted line. And if we hover over this, we can see we're going to get a little tooltip that says too long didn't read, which is what we define here inside of our title attribute. So next up, we have the mark tag. And what this allows us to do is highlight a portion of text easily only using this tag, and we don't need any additional styling to achieve that highlighting. So say, for example, here we have this paragraph tag here inside of my markup, and we have this text content inside of it. And maybe we want to highlight this portion of text right here, which coincidentally is a portion of text. So what we can do is our opening mark tag, and then we have our closing mark tag here, and then we can have our portion of text here. And once we say this, you can now see our text is gonna be highlighted inside of the browser. And by default, the background color is yellow here, but we can also tap into the styling of this mark tag within our style sheet here. So say for example, we target our mark tag here. Maybe we wanna change the background color to green. For example, we can do that. We can also change maybe the color of the text to white. And maybe because this is very boxy, we can add some padding to the left and right to make it a little less, you know, it's almost touching the sides here. So we can do some padding on the left and right. So we'll say zero and four pixels here. And there we go. So as you can see, you can tap into the styling of this mark tag with some of these properties here, but you can probably get a lot more customized with this, but just wanted to show you some of the basics. Now, next we have the KBD tag, which is used to define a keyboard input. And a very common example of how we may use this KBD tag is if you wanted to instruct the user to perform some sort of keybind to do something. So in our example here, we're saying press the command key plus a C key to copy this text. All right, so what we would do is we would wrap each one of these inputs in their own separate KBD tag. And by default, when we use this tag, it's going to change the font family here to what they call monospace. All right, so that's the default behavior. But once again, we can also customize and style these tags up ourselves if we wanted to. So if we go over to our style sheet here, we can target the KBD tag and maybe we want to change the background color to a light gray so we'll say light gray here so if we save that you'll see the background color will change and maybe we want to add some padding around all sides so we'll say padding of four pixels and then you can see it added that padding here so this next one is one of my favorites it's called the details tag and we use it in conjunction with the summary tag to pretty much create an accordion menu but without any javascript so let's take a look at how this works so what we'll do here is we'll replace this paragraph tag with a details and a summary tag so let's create our details tag here and then inside of the details tag we define a summary tag which is going to be what we see initially before we toggle the accordion so let's just copy this expand to see more information text here and we'll paste it inside of here and we'll save it. And right away, we get this little icon here and then we see the summary of what we want to perhaps expand upon. So then what we do here is we want to then uh, define anything that we want to reveal once we click on this here, just inside of the details tag. So we'll just copy this information here and we'll paste it like this. And now if we come here and click on the icon, we can see that we're able to toggle the information that was once hidden. So it creates this really cool accordion menu. 
So by default, the icon that comes with using these two tags isn't quite the best, but we can easily change that. So if we head over to my style sheet here, I've already went ahead and copied and pasted in the necessary style updates that we would need to make to replace that default icon. So if I uncomment this and save it, you can now see we have this Chevron icon instead of the default one that we were seeing before. So how we're doing this is we're targeting the summary tag and then we're targeting the before selector and we're going to add this content property here with this HTML character code which is going to be for the Chevron icon right here. So theoretically you could add any type of HTML code or icon you'd want here but I thought it made sense to add the Chevron icon here. So what we're also doing is we're going to target the details in an open state and then we're going to target the summary and the before selector once more and we're going to rotate this by 90 degrees so that when we open and close this the icon is going to go from this state right here back to a closed state and we're also adding a very smooth transition here so that when we open and close it it is not very abrupt. Now lastly we have the DFN tag which stands for the definition element and it specifies that a term is going to be defined within the content. So let's take a look at our example here and see how we could use this DFN tag. So HTML is a term that we're going to be defining here so we would want to wrap this inside of a DFN tag. So we'll remove HTML from here and then we'll put it inside of this tag here. So when we save this, the default behavior for this tag is to italicize and also bold that value that is wrapped inside of this DFN tag here. Now, very similar to the abbreviation tag that we covered earlier, this tag also accepts a title attribute. So if we save that, we can now hover over this term and it's going to give us a little tooltip very similar to how we had with the abbreviation tag. All right. Now, just like the other tags that we covered, we can actually customize the style of this, but we're not going to cover that again as it's the same thing as we covered with a few other tags within this video. Okay, so that's going to be all the tags that we're going to be covering here. Now, one thing I do want to mention really quick is you may be wondering, why don't we just use some divs and some span tags along with some styling to achieve some of the same results as we've seen with some of these tags. And the main reason why you want to opt for using these tags over maybe like a div or a span is because a div and a span are actually not semantic, meaning they don't have any meaning to them, where these tags that we actually took a look at today are semantic and they do provide meaning to the content that we're going to to define which means that screen readers and search engines will actually know what that content is. So that's going to do it for the video here today. If you guys did enjoy be sure to leave a like on it down below as it really helps out the channel and if you guys are not yet subscribed be sure to do so and I will catch you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Take care.